السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله دكتور. Uh, a very uh, good morning to you all, and uh, I hope you are well. Uh, my name is Dr. Ahmed Abba Haruna, um, who is going to be your host today. And the title of uh, this workshop is Towards an Excellent Senior Design Project Report and Presentation. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, Can you see my screen? All yes. right. So I would like, before I begin, I would like to uh, explain the motivation behind this uh, presentation. The, the, the motivation behind this workshop is to enlighten uh, the youths or uh, students out there. It could be not only students, uh, even uh, experts in terms of writing, uh, uh, what do you call an excellent uh, reporting you know, or presentation, I would say. So in my work, due to time constraint, I'm trying to hit uh, two beds with one stone. So I'm going to use presentation per se to show the major skeleton needed in order to design an excellent uh, reporting for project, or at the same time, using a presentation uh, methodology to showcase the actual idea needed to make the report and at the same time what is needed to make the presentation so i'm going to make it two in one inshallah um, so basically here is the outline of this uh, presentation which is introduction uh, background of uh, all related work we call it a uh, research problem uh, contribution requirements and specification design and implementation testing uh, analysis and evaluation issues or limitations and of course conclusion of the work and uh, future works so basically at the beginning of each reporting standard wise you need to have an introduction this is the standard what do you need in introduction in introduction you need to introduce the general issues which the project details entails for example Let's say you are talking about rising cost of healthcare, you know, hospitals and others, or Ministry of Health. Uh, in terms of environment, let's say you're talking about sustainability, or you're talking about requirements of an organization, what you need, or what problem you're trying to address. So you need to also identify what is the issue that you are working on or you're working towards on, a background about it. However, in addressing the issue, you need to have some supporting evidence, some statistics if possible. News maybe, but not really recommended as such in an international or research environment. Articles not really, but it's acceptable in some organization. However, when it comes to academia, we encourage our students to focus in using proper citations. Uh, that means a high index journals or you know uh, conferences out there. Um, briefly, uh, you need to describe how the project deals with the issue. And I'm going to show you an example, as I said. For example, now, this is the skeleton of introduction. Let me show you uh, uh, after this uh, point how or how a introduction should look at the end of the day properly. So you need to also address the project impact on society, locally or globally. Why are you doing the project in the first place? What are your who are your target audience and why? What benefit would it do to the organization or the environment you are targeting at? And what are the limitations, which is the positive, uh, the negative impact? Why the limitations are there? What costs, what are the risks uh, of your implementation of your proposed idea? So what I'm trying to show, this is the example. For example, let's say, then as an introduction, be it in the PowerPoint presentation of your report. But this, I'm going to show it as a presentation point of view. Whatever that I'm presenting now, it would be a summary of what is there in the reporting, which you are expected to have more. So, but this is an executive summary showing of the introduction of the whole report. So here it said, electricity consumption for cooling purpose is known to be the most expensive operational cost factor 
in data center. And then you see some citation is there. I made mention of what uh, citation, articles, news, then I said it's better to take, uh, to, to academically, to get a profile index citation. This is a paper, journal paper, 2011, highlighting this part. Then here is where I said, this trend is observed similarly in the fast growing Asian region. You see, now there is a background also involved of the problem. Among the data center energy consumption, the cooling energy dominates about one third of total data center energy. So here um, is specifically focusing about the general problem, you know, in Asia region. And the next thing is while free air cooling strategy is used elsewhere. Now I'm trying to be specific also in the introduction. It is not generally, that means I'm highlighting the problem statement. While free air cooling strategy is elsewhere, it is not generally applicable. All right. So I'm trying, the, you see the introduction is capturing what I just mentioned earlier. First, briefly describing the project deals with the issue, what are the issues, and what we are trying to solve, and where is the issues. Now, the next step, in your reporting, you need to have it more. You would have more information there but in the presentation this is just a uh, far fact i would say and also you need to use uh terminologies conjunction like consequently you know like while like however and all those things to show the academical part of what you are presenting you know to show the relationship between one sentence or one paragraph to another now moving on we are talking about background of all related works in background or related work, so after your introduction, you are expected to talk about in details about the background or related works specifically that you are trying to address the problem they have in order to propose your own new solution. So here you will talk about related terminologies, you know, in that area. If you are in engineering, you talk about the materials of engineer, you know, uh, that you needed. If you are in IT, the terminology is needed uh, to explain certain things, you know, in programming wise and others, oh, yeah. the concepts. All this needs to be highlighted in relation to the existing works. What kind of technology they use, like AI, you know, et cetera, et cetera, for example. Then, as I mentioned earlier, existing solutions need to be highlighted. If you're talking about products, yeah, there are products that have uh, X, Y, Z. So, however, the Z is not really properly represented. I want to improve upon it, you know. Uh, uh, and then, for example, then you are going to, like, become specific, you know, by saying, therefore, we are going to address X, Y, Z. I'm going to show you now. For example, in this slides, we are talking about the background or related work. So, for example, let's say uh, this is Badar. Badar did his work in 2006. And his work is talking about compensation uh, to, 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 to providers, you know, like a data center or service center. Uh, like, uh, and what he does is that he paid compensation to users if, let's say, he, he did not return their item on time or finish cleaning their item on time based on the day they promised. So, therefore, this is what he did. But he would, if he is late, he will give 10% to the person, the customers, and say sorry for the debt for the for missing the time that I promised. So then you, let's say Muhammad wanted to expand upon it. Muhammad see there is a problem here. Then he said, uh, however, the 10% that Badr is given, you know, to the user is to his customers are too low because he don't know maybe that guy wanted to use his suit and go for a conference. And now he give the suit to him tomorrow, which is already late. So Badr at the end of uh, the customer of Badr may end up, uh, you know, losing the conference or going there and lose some marks if he's a student trying to present for his uh, final year project because he, he need to dress in a professional manner. Therefore, you said here, Muhammad said, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the customer may end up at lost in a situation when uh, the deadline is not met. For instance, given the example I just gave recently, then you now bring another related work saying, uh, however, uh, okay, in another research, for example, in the, in the report, you will have to make it complete. 
This is just a PowerPoint showing uh, some part of it. But in the report, you will talk more on uh, uh, Anita encapsulating all these things in a very clear and yet uh, informative way. Then you could link, then you have to link this and that. In another research, Lee Juan et al. in the report, but in the presentation, you don't have to say in another research, you can just say it by your mouth. So, because that's why we call it PowerPoint presentation. These are points that are powerful for the uh, presenter to be able to express himself using the point to further clarify to his audience what he's talking about. All right? So now, uh, Lee Juan is talking about this. You also, you also show the problem of Lee Juan's work. You keep going. You know, similarly, Hyang et al. talk about this in his work. You know, however, there is no incentive for grid user illustration. So you see, you are showing the related works and their gaps, what they lack in their work. So therefore, you now have a conclusion of that section saying that there are various concerns or problems still not taken into account or properly addressed, especially in this works, in this area of grid computing. So now this would lead you to the next uh, skeleton of your report or your presentation, which is problem statement. Why we say problem statement? You see, they are all in link. Here we are going to be specific on what is the problem exactly you are going to work on, you are going to focus on with your solutions. The specific problem of the project you are going to solve, then we said, for example, let's say, you want to work. You want to focus on Masato. Masato et al. Who, uh, propose a method that reduce cooling energy consumption in a telecommunication company uh, room in Japan by eradicating hotspots. In their research, various heat controls were implemented to remove hotspots. For example, you know, hotspot it means like heat in the in 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 in, uh, in that environment. Saudi Arabia is uh, has a what do you call is is sometimes hot. There are season that is hot. So this work can be implemented here, saying that. So what he did, he tried to remove that heat area in the data center where computers are being stored. However, even though he's able to eliminate those hot areas, applying his method in tropical countries, as that in Southeast Asia, like Malaysia. Now you are being specific. Southeast Asia, because they are tropical regions. So, but you have to be specific, like Malaysia. Now, the audience would understand you're focusing on Malaysia. Problem specific. That's why it's called problems, research problem statement. So, could be very challenging for eradicating hotspots in such countries is a difficult problem. Humidity and others, raining and heat, all at the same time. Understood? Right. Now, the next thing in line, now that you identified your problem, is your objectives, the contributions or goals of that project you're working on. So then we said, you know, you could say to address this issue in Asia region. So you see here, we are capturing the introduction part. We talk about Asia in the introduction to address the issue in Asia region, especially in tropical countries such as that in Southeast Asia and University Technology Petronas Malaysia. So you see our introduction is linked where we talk about the background and then we talk about related works and then we capture our problem statement all at once, right? Then you said, this is what you want to do. This is your objective. This is your goal. The goal of your research is to propose green incentive based scheduling algorithms to significantly save the cooling electricity consumption cost and at the same time compensate people like Badr as I explained earlier you know uh, or Muhammad as explained earlier the customers of Muhammad or Badr as explained earlier the users for their submitted jobs when they submit their suit to wash it for them for example as I taught I as I mentioned earlier, miss the completion deadline, you want to match the two and give the compensation. So if you could remember in the problem background, we talk about some work that did that. 
But we want to improve upon because in the problem background, we said the compensation 10% is not enough. So therefore, this work tries to improve upon to increase the compensation. First, and sa uh, first saving cooling energy consumption cost. Then the compensation part also would be there when job is missing its deadline. You understand? So we would see how. Now, the next thing in line is now that you said you have your goals, you have your objectives. So what do you need to be able to achieve that goal? So what are the requirements and specifications? You know, we call it methodology in a sense. But I'm relating this with the, you know, with the reporting, uh, what do you call, reporting style of University of Harper Arbatin for the senior design project. So I'm being specific here. It can use the word methodology, but for the student perspective, I think there is a reason. So they would know that this is talking about requirements and specification. And what do you need in terms of requirements? So you need to identify your functional user requirements, like the computers you're gonna use, the, hard, the hardware tools, you know, sensors, for example, because if you are dealing with hotspots related to this research that I just explained, uh, the example, you need sensors, you need computers, servers to read the data of the hotspots, you know, in terms of non-functional user requirements, you know, uh, which re in relation to the example I just discussed, you need to uh, look at what, how do you measure the performance? Okay, electricity consumption, you know, maybe average turnaround time of the algorithm when it comes to submitting jobs and returning to the user, and maybe deadline, missing deadline rates, et cetera, et cetera. Then the next thing is technical specifications, you know, uh, in relation to uh, the senior design project of Jamia for al in the requirement is in terms of technical specification, you are expected to drive from and maps to customer requirements if you're dealing with what customer. If you're dealing with uh, what you call services, you need to map the requirement of what the project needs, the, your audience, your targeted audience, what they need. You are trying to solve a problem, right? And the problem has to do with environment or organization, right? So therefore, what are the requirements needed to uh, ensure that it helps you reach or reach your target and help you also assess the work you are trying to propose? So, and it must be specific and testable, right? And then the product must meet all the specifications that you mentioned earlier, right? Now, moving on with some example. In summary, this is more than this, but in your PowerPoint, you can show a flow of what the steps that you do for each specification. They're related to the uh, ex example given in this slides. It could be like in your PowerPoint, the process comprises of the features below. First, benchmark trace files. So what we did, because we are dealing with you know jobs, so therefore is a simulation-based work, so I had to download a grid workload archive trace files, which is a real uh, workload trace files. I reprocess it. That's why you see the reprocess here. We pre-process the data. We remove the, on the, the errors from the file. We, we're going to use, then you will explain in your report each and every data. What is the data sets? How did you remove it? But in the PowerPoint, you just make it like this. Just one point, but you will explain to the, you, to the audience. Uh, in benchmark trace file one, is talking about uh, LCG trace file. LCG trace file was downloaded and this file or the test data sets were meant to be used for data center to measure the efficiency of deadline, for example. And the second benchmark is talking about ShackNet trace file. And the second, uh, the ShackNet trace file is being used in medical field. So we want to take this data because also it's considering deadline to analyze our work. So you see, you are showing the requirements and explaining in the report where you may have one to two pages explaining only about this point in the PowerPoint presentation. But when you come to present to your panel, you just make it short and brief and in point. The next step is, the next step is, you know, um, the algorithms. Then you explain, you develop algorithm A, B, C, first come, first serve, this and that then these are the baseline approaches, then this is your proposed one, you know, then you explain that now these are the proposed one, which is the green incentive-based schedule algorithm. Then you talk about the next 
thin in line in terms of specification is you're going to talk about how did you measure it, the performance metrics. Then you explain them also in the report. I take, uh, as mentioned earlier, I talk about average turnaround time, uh, deadline missing rate. So you, you explain them in your methodology. In the report, put them in details. You know, why you take this. Show proof, citation, like you see even here, there is citation showing that, okay, these are the work from the work of this guy. But then these are the new one now. Now moving on to the next step is system design. Now in terms of system design, in relation to the reporting, report style given by senior design project in the University of Hafar al -Badi, you students are expected, which can be used as a standard case in different universities as well. Here you are expected to completely document the project design, you know, you use some graphical illustration, you know, maybe flow chart, you know, maybe even diagram showing something, you know, there are tools to do that. You can use video, Microsoft video to do that. You could use uh, Microsoft Word to do that and et cetera, et cetera. So you, here is expectation of design, uh, showing a diagram architecture, then explaining also each and every step. Number one, you need to focus on specifically Solution concept, what concept you use, general approach of solving the stated problems, what approach you use, why do you use that approach? You need to, at the same time, while explaining, I use approach A because uh, based on the literature, approach A uh, seems to be better than approach B. So therefore, looking at, you know, our uh, problem or the problem we are trying to solve or the proposed methods whatsoever, I think uh, X, Y, Z would be better. So therefore, we are adapting this because looking at the environment we are at in, uh, approach A is better. It better suits this, uh, what do you call, problem we're trying to solve. Then you need to also describe, you know, description of use develop algorithms. Well, then you need to explain the algorithms that I just mentioned now in the previous slides. General approach of solving the tested problems, you know, you have to like bring some baseline approaches because maybe before, as we mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Badr, Badr and Muhammad did some work. So these are the general approaches, right? Description of used or develop algorithm. You need to explain the develop algorithms. What are the uses of those algorithms? Why you choose to even use them in the first place? And then you would now also describe your proposed algorithm. Okay, we intend, we are in this work, uh, we are proposing algorithm BY, which is a hybrid of algorithm, you know, AC. Uh, and these are our selection criteria for choosing that because AB shows this and that, for example. But you don't have to like go deeper because you already explained in your problem statement. Then secondly, but you need to still highlight it in a specific sub-function identification. Then if there is any sub-function identification, like, okay, like uh, a new, uh, what do you call, a new functionality that you may think of using, or you may think of highlighting, but it, knows, it is not really a specific thing that you want to use, however, but it still needs to be featured to be explained, you can also explain about that. Then moving on, number two, in terms of system design, you need to have the architecture, right? You need to have the architecture. For example, if you are a software developer, the, uh, developer, then you need to explain what are the mechanism you use, what software development uh, architecture do you use? Is it agile development, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera? or you know, are you using the, the normal uh, flow of designing software, which is using the system development lifecycle, which you need to describe, you need to explain it, you need to design it and show the flow and explain each and every flow. In stage one, I'm going to do this because in stage one is this, therefore we are going, then we move to stage two, blah, blah, blah. You keep explaining and then alternative architecture. You know, what are the alternatives? How do you intend to compare them also the architectures? You know, because there are others. If you use SDLC, uh, as if the other work use SDLC, uh, system development life cycle, maybe your work is gonna use Agile and you need to give the reason why you choose to use Agile you know, agile uh, architecture. And of course, in your presentation, this is the point that you will just highlight and then you explain more. But in the report, you need to go deeper, you know. 
hardware versus software components. You need to explain maybe I use MacBook Pro, uh, you know, size this. And then I use uh, in terms of software, you know, for example, you can say uh, for the software you use, you just mention any software. Maybe you use Eclipse, as simple as Eclipse. You need to explain why. We use Eclipse because it's simulation based work. And then we test the data. You know, we use file to, you know, or Excel or CSV to call the data after we pre process the data. And then you show the flow in diagram how you did each step. Then you take that and just put in your slides just the diagram. Then you explain without putting the details by just pointing the points the way I show the trend of this presentation from the beginning. Now, functions of each component need to be highlighted. You know, uh, you know, like this is for that, that is for that. Showing in the diagram, you need to explain each stage and each function for the component used for the hardware. Maybe you use sensors. Then you just take a picture of the sensor. Put the sensor in your report. Sensor A, this is a sensor that is used to take the temperature. Sensor B is the... You know, uh, if, you go, if you go, this is showing the, you know, the sensor that is taking the, uh, what do you call, the temperature outside the room, the data center. So you need to explain and show the picture and explain each and every stage in the architecture, right? And the architecture of the sensors as well. You need to put the diagram there and explain it. But in the PowerPoint presentation, just bring the diagram and put and put the figure and talk with your mouth. Now, the next thing is number three, a relation still to Hafer al uh what do you call, uh, presentation requ uh, reporting pre uh, requirements. However, it could be a different case because there is no order to how to do it. If you just say system design, you can just put everything and keep going, keep explaining by sections. So in Hafer al Batin, they choose to do it that way, which is also great to simplify uh, what do you call uh, the tax and uh, uh, understanding to the student on what is basically needed at each step. You know, in terms of component design, here for each hardware and software component, you have to identify what are the hardware and software. And you need to also what? Uh, talk about the customs biases the off, off the shelf and the justification for developing a custom component. Let me just make it simple. If if you are able to show the architecture, you just put the diagram. And when you come to component design, you show how you design your sensors with, given the example I give, your sensors with the hardware, the computer, and the software. You just make a diagram showing the component and explaining, okay, first of all, the, the temperature outside will bring the data to the server A. You know, and then the temperature inside will bring the data to server B using port B. You know, so this is what you will explain here, as simple as that. You know, um, and then you show also the comparison of your own architecture, you know, or component use and the other work component they use and how to show you because you need to show the difference as you are going to the end, you know. And we there is something that we call custom components. Maybe you customize the components. The existing work is there, which is the first one. Then you customize it. You design and implement, showing what? Maybe you could use flowchart to explain other works, uh, explain the because you may not have the money or the fund to buy other gadgets for another work and practice uh, and show it in experiment. So therefore, what you can do, you can use secondary data, showing it maybe using custom components, flowcharts, state machine, pseudocode. You know, see the code between your work and their work, showing the difference. Then at the end of the day, since it is student level project, then you can show how your work improves. If you are able to, for the people from software engineering or computer science, you can easily simulate the algorithms that someone did, you know, and simulate double of your algorithm as well. And then test both using the same parameter and see Based on the performance metrics I mentioned earlier, maybe average turnaround time, maybe worst case, maybe best case of the algorithm runtime, then you know which one is best. At the same time, you have to be careful in terms of component, you have to make sure your hardware is up to the tax because sometimes your software can be good, but your hardware can be bad and it, you end up having bad results. 
right? So, you know, a number of item number four is system integration. How do you do the integration? Now you talk about all the components. How do you integrate? You need to explain that. What standard did you follow? Is it IEEE standard? Is it Cisco-based standard? You need to explain that. Uh, if you're from engineering, you need to explain based on the benchmarks that you have in engineering. If you are from, uh, but let's be specific with the engineering parts. This, this is where, uh, I mean, where I'm sure of. So you need to, you know, show the integration of the system because uh, you, you, I'm sure you work about with sensors and other stuff. So therefore you need to explain the sequence of the diagram, the interaction of each, explain them, you know. Um, so integration methodology, how the system is put together. You need to also explain in the report, you know, but in the presentation, you don't have to like put everything together. You can have just one, two slides explaining both these four components as system design, uh, I will, which I will show you the criteria a sample of how the evaluation is going to be assessed when you are presenting is different than that of the report. But I'm going to focus on the evaluation of presentation so that you would have an idea what is needed. Now, moving on to number five is design evaluation. In terms of design evaluation, how and why the system design changed the initial design to the final design. So you have to like show, okay, how that means okay how this design a is why uh, it was cha it was like this because of a b c d you know so and now this is the final design because we take a and b we match together we improvise to get c you know so this is you design how you want to evaluate and then you put you 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 explain the parameters that you are going to use in measuring those you know, and if possible, try to show, use some pseudocode, uh, you know, uh, which is the uh, English language of explaining an algorithm in a sense. It's more like an English language, we call it, but is 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 to show is the step-by-step -step or sequence of an algorithm or a system you are trying to develop in a layman language. Now, after all that is done in system design, one of the main work is the implementation. Now you start implementing uh, what you call those components, those architectures, you know, that you made mention earlier in system design. You take your computer, you take your Eclipse, for example, you take your sensors and you start coding it. You start linking them in reality and you explain how you implement them. Then here is where you will specifically show the pseudocode of your implementation because you cannot take your implementation to the PowerPoint. Right. You can only show the steps here, the methodology of the algorithm, you know, begin algorithm will do this. Then first, if this is met, it will uh, what say that solution is found. But if it didn't find the solution in the first instance, then the next step is do what? Repeat the whole situation. Go back. Keep doing because you are using loop until you find the best optimal solution to stop. Then you have to show that in flowchart and see the code. Sometimes I would say when you have the see the code uh, slides, if possible, have the flowchart. For presentation, it's good to just focus on the flowchart sometimes because it will now be showing using the flowchart symbols, you know, the decision. If else, you know, you have the symbol, you keep going, etc., uh, etc., et and explaining the stage. Now, after implementation stage is testing, analysis, and evaluation. Here, in a real world, we call it, uh, you know, in a research world, we just call it result and discussion. Because testing can be, uh, I mean, testing and analysis is result and discussion. You analyze, you explain the result. But in relation to uh, Jami Hafer al uh, you know, senior design uh, project uh, report is that it's meant, it's, it's specifically mentioned as testing, analysis, and evaluation here. What it's required of you is how did you do you need to explain how did you how did you determine whether the system is operational and meets all the requirements and specifications? For example, after implementing, right? Let's say this is the result of your implementation. Then you now just put and explain. Figure one, testing error. Now you're talking about testing. As we can see in figure one, 
we had an error for blah 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 x y z and the and and then we use the next method to solve the issue for example i'm just giving a skeleton in the report you need to explain in details but in the powerpoint you can just put it like this and you do the explanation on why maybe if you go to you can also put it in the report maybe you can also explain as we see in figure two we solve the issue by adding blah 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 xyz because python only accepts strings with quotation marks so this is the testing part of your work i'm talking about so in the report you have the same symbol the same picture then explanation and you can bring the same thing in your presentation like i did here now system analysis is another thing first we talk about the testing right done system analysis and evaluation here you are going to focus on the attributes of your system the system you study you know how did you analyze it for example as i meant, meant mentioned earlier i've raised on around time you know electricity consumption cost you know incentive blah blah you know for example so you just mention all this like for example average on around time maybe if you're talking about performance okay i use performance i use efficiency we use efficiency in this research first of all i want to also highlight one thing don't uh, is not advisable to be using i use is not academically okay is not academically right it needs to be this research work you know used a b c d to be able to achieve x y z you understand that is the way it should be for example then in terms of analysis electricity electricity save and consumption is let's say the performance given here in this related to the example i gave you earlier okay in terms of electricity fc then you put the diagram in your report the figure you name it you exp you you said okay you 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 made mention of what is talking about you know then you come and write a paragraph one two three it doesn't matter explaining the differences of the significance you find here first you were measuring three things for each algorithm so you need to in your report to say for fcff uh, first come first serve in terms of don green algorithm uh, first come first serve schedule algorithm uh, consumed about 25000 watt of electricity you know uh, in terms of or, or in, on the other hand green s algorithm you know uh, first come first serve when being transformed into green scheduling algorithm it consumed 20000 watt for the same number of jobs which is 50 jobs being executed and at the same time it saved what uh about 5500 or 7000 watt of electricity so now you see you have to explain each and you show the difference you can see here it is evident that the traditional first come first serve algorithm has consume more power consumption as compared to the hybrid first come first serve algorithm which is now transitioned into green scheduling algorithm taking into consideration of the sensors uh, that you use in the work it saved about five seven thousand electricity consumption as compared between the no the baseline approach and the proposed approach so you explain about the other algorithm so you see you keep explaining if from there you will generate many information to talk about and to clarify to the user but when you come to presentation just put the picture like this then come to the audience and start explaining here we use uh, we we measured our algorithm with electricity saved and consumed and you can see we use four baseline scheduling algorithms uh, four baselines and four hybrid uh, green scheduling algorithms and you can see it is evident that uh, in comparison between the non scheduled non green and green about 5000 or 7000 electricity consumption was saved in terms of first come first serve however if you look at it in terms of round robin it saves about 6000 and moving on to lstr so you see you are making the presentation a summary you are explaining without missing information and yet carrying along the audience the evaluators of your presentation so you keep going the next thing in line is 
issues and limitations because there is no perfect system if there is perfect system there wouldn't be a research there is always a problem there is always a gap there is always something to be able to replace or to improve you know that's why we call issues or research limitations you as the researcher you have to be able to be humble enough to show the weakness of your work <laughs> you know a gap of your work because it's not perfect you know because it shows that you are a good researcher you know what you're doing is very important for your reputation here box and challenges well for each issue then you talk about the box you found you talk about issue 1 issue 2 and why you find it and it the solution like and how you fix it you know and the limitations then you move to your conclusion which is the last stage here in conclusion you will talk about what you learned and what you did throughout in summary i'm going to give you an example now what would you do differently in similar to project in future you can also incorporate that your own conclusions at the end as a result of working in your project so now let me just show you one example it related to the example i was given from the beginning to the end of the research that i was talking about as a reference then in the conclusion part then we said it is evident that the proposed incentive based job scheduling uh, scheduling techniques can eradicate hotspots in data center in tropical countries such as in malaysia as well as significantly reduce the electricity consumption cost in providing cooling in data center so you see if you could remember you remember our introduction we talk about general problems Southeast Asia. We come to background. We talk about the work that was done in Japan. We come to specific problem. Then we talk about you know uh, Malaysia that that would not be used in specific. So now you see we are sh closing by saying it is evidence. We have done the experiment. We have done the implementation, and we see that based on what we explained earlier, showing the result just now that yes, this had happened. It has been achieved. And it reduced the electricity consumption, which is good. Then the next thing. Then you said, if let's say there is a continuation, you could say, furthermore, if you want, in your report, when you are writing, or even in the presentation, to connect this and that, showing that this is not enough. You have another thing to explain. Furthermore, the compensation element in the proposed method is used, is, is to provide an incentive to users when their submitted jobs miss the job completion deadlines. If you could remember, in the beginning of the slides, when we're talking about the background of problem, we, in the introduction, we're talking about the impact to environment, right? What we achieve. So now we are showing the impact to our environment, to users, that it provides incentive to the users, users like Badr and Muhammad that want to wash their suits to go for presentation. Now you see what we did. We try to avoid the missing deadlines and we give them money, which is what we taught, what we plan as our goals to achieve. So then you explain what you achieve here in the conclusion. Then you said, this is a positive move to encourage the, the customers to stay in the grid or to come to this laundry and submit their you know, clothes for washing, even though the job deadlines might be missed. But in other words, at the end of the day, it will promote fairness between the customers and the laundry guys, the providers. Because if, let's say, you take your clothes to be washed for four years and then you come and i miss deadline and i tell you sorry it's not fair or i take 10 percent like the work of anita no instead i will give you your four year and say i'm sorry that's what this work did so you see this promote fairness at the end of the day the user will also come back to work to to be to, to come back because he he may make money if the deadline is not important to him <laughs> the fine incurred can serve as monetary tool just what i explained now monetary tool to the resource providers to improve their schedulers because now you give a reason to the laundry man to make sure he he buys more washing machine to make sure he meet deadlines so he will not be losing money because he want to save more money and he want to maintain you as a customer so thereby to enjoy optimum benefits from the green incentive based scheduler so you see the algorithm is helping both the provider to improve always and the users to make money when necessary because if they miss that line is a win-win situation fairness take sorry habibi take your four year we're sorry uh i hope you come back next time who wouldn't go back i will go back also <laughs> and, and pray they miss deadline i'm just joking 
Um, so, <laughs> you know, then future works. In terms of future works, you know, after your conclusion, what would you do differently in similar project in future? So here you talk about limitations earlier, right? In the past two slides. Then you said, okay, um, we would try to improve upon A, B, C, D, uh, which was the lim limitation highlighted earlier. And we are trying to use genetic algorithm, for example, because genetic algorithms deals with A, B, C, D, mutations and also all sort of things. Then you explain your reason and you close your work. You know, then you have your references, which is very important. Don't put newspapers, no, papers, uh, uh, well-known research. You know, Scopus, journals, conference, good, there are good papers that are even not Scopus. You put the references, but in terms of references, there are a lot of references style. You know, uh, you know, APA, IEEE, so depending on the requirements of your organization or the journal you are going to submit your work or the university you are going to submit your report, they will tell you what kind of reporting, what kind of reference you need. But what, what I'm trying to show specifically here is you must show your references in your report, complete reference in the presentation, then you highlight the references that you use in the slides. Not all the references, you have 100, you put there. No, 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 no. Just what you highlighted in these slides is what you will put because you need to show that you know what you're doing and there is a mark for that. Before I move to question, let me just briefly show you something in terms of how you would be evaluated in a standard-wise presentation, professional. First of all, the marks is subjective, but the content may be all the same across board. First criteria is preparation. The evaluator will look at the evidence of the preparation for the presentation. You know, the evidence is I just showed, the results, you know, the notes, some explanation, some diagrams, you know, uh, how you prefer this evidence, you know, um, you know, but in the beginning, before he comes to the diagrams, he will look at your outline. Very good, because it's clear now he knows what he's going to see at the end, which is very important to have your outline. Uh, and then uh, you saw there was some point in my slides where I highlighted red in my introduction, some key points so that it's easier for you even as the presenter to just go directly to the point and explain. You understand? You don't read like, no, just highlight some point. Once you see the points, you as a presenter, it will help you rem remind yourself that, okay, this line is talking about this. Let me be professional and look through, look to the eyes of my audience. It's very important to look to the eyes of your audience, to take in charge of the flow because your confidence would give you more marks when you are presenting. You know, is uh, visualization is the next thing. PowerPoint slides were efficient, good PowerPoint design. You take your time, make it nice, attractive, you know, easier to understand in terms of uh, visualization diagram, not too much congestion like in the report. Uh, you know, organization, how you, how the flow of your presentation, introduction, content, up to conclusion, up to references, 15 marks. You see, there is a big mark here. You see, it's very important to spend a lot of time to make a good PowerPoint, 10 marks, good. Experience, subject matter explained, provide convincing answer for the questions. What you're doing here, you have to, as we just explained, we did X, Y, Z because of this. This is what the examiner would look at. Problem, background of your problem, how you explain it, specific problem, proposed solution, uh, system design, you know, uh, specification, evaluation. At the end of the day, he's going to take and your questions, how you answer the questions they asked you, which is very important, 30 uh, marks. Dynamic interaction with evidence, very important. Verbal expression, five marks. Dynamic inter is, uh, interaction, talking to you, you know, talking to the audience, looking left to right, not only your examiner because you're scared. <laughs> no, you have to own the stage. You have to be able to believe you are the owner of that stage because everyone is there to learn from you. That's how you should believe. You are the one with the information. They are there to learn from what you have. So why be scared? Go, believe in yourself, look into their eyes, pretend you are just in the room with your friends, you know, or family members. Think, you have to create that visuals in your brain to help you go. Verbal expression, the way you explain your words, practice, you know, if possible practice, what should be clear, the visuals, the body language, 
using hands, making explanation, you know, using pointers, the way you talk, move left to right, not focus only on the slides. No. Slides, people. Slides, people. One second slides, one second people. Or one second slides, ten second people. For example, you would know what I mean. Correct and appropriate language, very important. Sentence, how you put the sentence. Avoid informal terms like I developed this, I did this, we did this. No. This work did this. You know, in this work we did, uh, in this work this uh, so 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 a was addressed in this work it's co this work is concluded that this 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 so all these things but however as an undergraduate level you can use the we but in the presentation but in the report don't use Ap uh, appearance dress nicely now that i give an exp explanation of bother going to you know to this uh to to laundry you need to get that laundry get your suits ready you know, don't come with short knickers or with sleepers. Wallahi, it's going to affect uh, five marks for your presentation. I've seen uh, some students used to do that. Come with T-shirts. It's even better for you to wear your beautiful towel, the Saudi towel, you know, the, the, the towel, and come with it, and you get your five marks because it's official dressing. Time management, clear, brief presentation within the time given to you. If it is 15 minutes, get it done it will give you 10 marks just by that so that is it uh any question please questions are welcome thank you for listening uh i really appreciate please you're most welcome feel free i'm here for you uh this was set to for you guys so uh please uh, ask me question and i'm willing to support you to the best of my ability and even afterwards, uh, just to tell you, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. I can share my slides if you need, no problem. Uh, or if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. To me, is beyond the lecture. Is No, it's beyond that. Is to be able to find an opportunity to help others, guide them for the betterment of their life. So you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for this session and this presentation as a for you're welcome you're welcome thank you i have a question uh, do you have uh, sent for us the small form for uh, depending on the project yes uh, pardon sorry you said form do you have do you have form like form for uh, like classic form or uh, something like this or depend it and then when we do the, the project okay uh yes i have i can share with you no problem like a template right of this project i have the yeah, template that. from the university yeah, yes, i can share with you uh you can uh, uh reach out to me my email is a a h a r u n a uh at uhb dot edu dot sa you send me an email and I will share all the necessary things that you need, inshallah, to help you do uh, your job. Okay. Okay. I, I email huh? and for send you and explain what I mean. I will send you the email from my email. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank all you. Best. Thank you. So, yeah. uh, please, this, this part is form. You please scan and fill in the for your certificates, the information, because you would be given certificate for attending. Uh, because we value your time all right and it's good for your cv please uh, this uh, is to encourage you to keep uh, attending to these workshops is very important to go outside the 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 the, the 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 classroom and learn more because it's it makes you stand out outside if people apply for a jobs with degrees and then you come you went to workshop a workshop b workshop c of course, as an employer, I will take you because I, it shows that you are the person that is always willing to learn and expand his skills. So the people that do more uh, stand out in job application and they are picked, inshallah, of course, with the risk, and then they get the job. All right. Most likely is because of what they did. And then the risk also play a role. So uh, please, uh, you're welcome. Uh, any more questions? Please feel Thank free. you, Doctor, for your time. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure.
All right, I think no question then. Um, please scan the barcode, fill in the forms, register your name. I think they will send you the certificates based on this form. And the, the, the form is going to be closed in the next 10 minutes, inshallah. So please do that now. And then if you all get it, then we will now uh, end the session when you are done. Then I will just uh, call it off, inshallah. And I'm here in the meantime, while you are filling the forms, please, uh, you're more than welcome to ask me a question, whether regarding what my presentation or regarding something related to your work that you would like to ask me for advice. Um, uh, please let me know in the next 10 minutes. I'm here while you are filling the forms. So we will close everything by 1210, inshallah. Thank you. And by the way, if you are a student of Hafar al Bath in Jamia, please, anytime you need anything, uh, guidance, any support, any advice, I'm, uh, inshallah, I'll do my best uh, to, to, to support my students. Uh, whether I know you, whether I don't know you, you have a question, you uh, need support, you need extra guidance, let me know, please. Uh, I just want to offer that uh, sincerely um, because I don't have to, you don't have to know someone to help. So if you have any concern in your project, you need any guidance, inshallah, reach out to me and I would be able to do my best to the best of my ability to support you. We can arrange all that. You can email me. You can reach out to me wherever you are. Inshallah, I will do my best to assist you in project, you know, or maybe in anything, any, ex ex uh, what do you call advice? you know, related to how you uh, I mean, what you're studying, what you wish to do for future, you know, these are very important because I'm doing this not for anyone. I'm doing it for myself, for the fact that, you know, I want to make it, inshallah, I hope it's going to be a Sadaqah Tijariya. So please, if you have problem, problems, please uh, reach out to me. I will try my best to guide you or give you the advice that I can to support you. All right, inshallah. Thank you. So I think I, I wish you all the best. Uh, you know, you take care and nice meeting you all. Ma'asalama. See you again, inshallah.